Thank you for the introduction and hello from my side as well. Uh, so for all of you who, who, who speak Serbian, you can thank to Luca for coming to this track, so I will speak in English. Thank you, Luca, for coming. Uh, I will speak today about the art of uh, proactive support. And my first question is actually to all of you, why are we here? So what do you expect to hear at this, uh, this session? Is there anyone who would love to raise a hand and say, what are your expectations? No volunteers, okay. Thank you. Приятно. Okay, thank you. Tips and tricks. Someone else? Okay, I will go with you briefly what this is all about. So we'll have three parts of this presentation. First part will be the importance of having proactive support. Second part is how can you start with providing proactive support. And third part will be concrete action steps. So let's go to the first part, the importance of proactive support. Some statistics. First question that comes to your mind is why does it matter at all? And when I was a kid, I liked to play uh, with math and with numbers. So basically, I will, uh, I will deal with numbers now as well. Uh, statistics say that it takes 12 positive experiences to make up for only one unresolved negative experience. Second, news of bad customer service reaches more than twice as many years as the news of negative customer service. 70% uh, of buying experiences are based on the way how customer feels being treated, so the emotion. And 91% of unhappy customers will stop their business with you. They will not work with you again. More statistics. 94% of you think now you are men boring. 6% of my parents, I'm, I'm always awesome for them. And uh, some of you guys who are from my team, so I'm always cool for you. But 94% of you are thinking, okay, man, you're boring now. You're only talking about statistics. Anyway, I need to deal with numbers again. For every customer who complain, 26 other customers are silent. So let's take a quick look how does it look like in reality. You have 27 unhappy customers. Out of these 27 unhappy customers, you have only one support ticket because 26 are silent. And at the end of the day, you have 25 lost customers because 91% of customers who are not satisfied with their experience won't do business with you again. So you have only one support ticket and you have 25 people who are leaving your service because they are not satisfied. And it doesn't matter, do you call it now customer support, customer service, customer experience, customer happiness team, there are differences, but customer is in the center of each term. So what does it mean customer support? Dower told you about switching from customer support to customer happiness in Manage WP, and actually customer support resolves support tickets. That is the main thing that you're doing. What customer happiness team does, customer happiness resolves problems so they don't reappear. So it's the switch of mindset in a way that you perceive a problem, not a support ticket which is in front of you and that you need to solve, but it is a problem that you need to address so it doesn't reappear again for anyone else. So with this in mind, we are coming to the second part of this presentation, how to start. And Simon Sinek, I don't know who, who of you know uh, this guy, uh, he says start with why. I recommend you to, to read his book, Start With Why, or at least to watch his, uh, his video, Golden Circles, at YouTube. And uh, that is exactly what I did with the first team meeting when I was officially chosen to be a successor of Dawar. So I had a meeting with my team, and it was the first meeting of me being leader in front of them. I came and I asked them, why does it matter at all? Why do we as a team exist? And what would, it, what would be a difference 
If tomorrow there is no any more customer happiness team at Manage WP, what would change? They didn't really accept it very well because it was a very theoretical experience for all of them. But at the end of the day, I said, this is something that we need to agree upon. So each and every future action that we take should be aligned with that. And this is what we concluded. Manage WP customer happiness team makes the experience of our customers the best possible and proactively improves our product according to that. So proactivity is the key word here. It's not only about solving tickets, it's not only about chasing some statistics, it's about proactively addressing customer issues, problems so they don't re reappear again. So my another question for all of you is what does it mean to have proactive support? Anyone? Anyone, any example? Find it before the client figures out. Find it before the client figures out, great, okay. Someone else? There is no right, wrong action, yeah. Keep somebody happy before they pissed off. Sorry? Is it keep somebody happy before they become pissed off. Okay, keep somebody happy because that person becomes pissed off. Good, okay, someone else? Okay, fix some bugs as soon as possible. So let's take a look at the metrics that we were using. Peter Drucker, the father of modern management, said you cannot manage what you're not able to measure. So basically whatever you do, you need to find a way how you will measure it in order to track if you're good or bad at it. So customer happiness metrics established in 2013 uh, in Manage WP were this one. First response time. Basically, it's the amount of time that you need to reply, to have a first reply to each ticket. Average response time, that is the average amount of time that you need to reply to any, to any customer issue. First answer resolution, it is the percentage of, uh, percentage of uh, tickets that you solved in a first reply. Answered in 15 minutes, it is the percentage of, uh, of uh, tickets that you uh, answered in this quick amount of time. Average replies to resolve is the average number of replies that you need to resolve the customer issue. Resolution time is the total amount of time from the moment when the ticket was created to the moment when it was officially closed and solved. Support rating is the average rate that you receive from your customers so their satisfaction. Number of tickets per day. Trial conversion, meaning how many customers who, who, who contacted you applied uh, later on for some, subscribe for some of premium plans, and average number of tickets, uh, tickets that you have per customer. So my next question for you is, which one of these metrics are proactive and which one are reactive? Which one can help you to deal proactively and which one with reactive? Let's go with proactive. Who can tell me which metrics are showing how proactively we are solving issues? Trial conversion, okay. Why? It's the consequence, okay? Bueno. Tickets, tickets per customer. Okay. Because it's the less bugs you have, the less will people complain. That, that is exactly the answer. Tickets per customer is the main metric here because if you have, uh, if you're increasing the number of customers on your product and your business is growing, that's good. And logically, the number of tickets per day will increase as well because you have more customers. So you have more customers, you have more tickets, which doesn't mean that necessarily to, that you have more bucks. But if you're tracking average number of tickets or complaints that you receive per each customer, and if this number decreases for time, that means that you're proactively resolving customer issues. So you're tending to have least, each day, least number of these tickets per customer. So, 
now, when we were discussing about this, that the, mo the biggest part of our metrics were, uh, were actually reactive and were not showing to us how we are proactively dealing with, with uh, customer experience, we needed to figure out how, how to change our mindset. So not to talk only about the time, which is important aspect of customer experience, of course, and it is very important if you're having some issue, it is very important how quickly that issue is addressed. But also to talk about how to observe these customer complaints in a different way and to resolve problems instead of tickets. The first step was, of course, changing, changing our mindset. Second step was putting ourselves in the customer's perspective and asking a simple question. What makes the success of my customer? So what is the key thing that makes each my customer successful? And why, at the end of the day, the, it is important for that customer to have managed WP as part of that success? So that brought us to the new role as part of the customer happiness team, which is customer success role, and the new metrics that we merged with the previous one, which were showed. First one is onboarding success. So who can say what is onboarding success? Or at least predict? Yes, but how, how can you measure it? With support. If he's contacting support, for example. In ideal situation, that person doesn't need to, to contact support, but we can measure it as a percent of people who tried our product at the end of the day. Okay, you onboarded some customers, for example, in managed WP, if we talk about our dashboard. Person tr came to managed WP, growth team, did great job, but the next step, is you need to add your website to a dashboard. So if you haven't successfully added your website, you haven't tried any feature that WP has to offer. So basically the first step when you are coming to dashboard is add your website. So basically what is the percentage of people who successfully tried and are using some, some managed WP feature is the metrics which can show how successful we are in the onboarding process. Second metric is early leave rate. You have many people who just subscribe and even don't know what they subscribed for and leave, never come back again. So what is the percentage of people that came to your product and never came back again? Never added a website and never tried manage WP features. Of course, the point of this metric is to be as small as possible. Per feature success rate, very important. Each feature that we have to offer, what is the average success rate that, that you have? Feature usage rate, what is the, for each, again, per feature, how many people are using it? You have 100% of your customers and 90% 90, 90 of our customers are using Manage WP Backup Tool. Free users use rate. Again, from the perspective of Manage WP, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, features which are available for free users. So it is very important to track as well free users if they are successfully using Manage WP. Churn rate. What is churn rate? Are you familiar with that? Someone? Yes? Yeah in the easiest possible way said. There are, there are uh, different ways to, to, to track uh, churn, but in the easiest and simplest way said, that's what, what, you, what you mentioned, uh, you track the, the percentage of customers who left your service. Then we have upsell rate. What is actually upsell rate? You can measure it again in different ways. For example, in Manage WP, we currently have st uh, free standard uh, professional and business plans. Uh, so you can measure it in a way, how, what is the percentage of people who, uh, who change their plan from, uh, from standard to professional, let's say. But uh, we measure it in a different way. It's actually uh, the amount of sites, the number of sites 
that your users are managing with, with ManageWP. Why? Because if you are managing a bigger amount of websites, it means that your business is growing. Maybe you're not using all ManageWP features, maybe you, you are not, uh, you're not familiar with all of them, but still if the number of websites that you manage is growing, it means that your business is go growing and we're coming back to these questions, you're more successful as a customer. Customer's lifetime value is the, 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 average, the average amount of money that you receive per customer. Trial conversion, again, from previous metrics, and tickets per customer, again, from previous metrics. So all of these are just metrics, which are, which are very important, but the question is what should you do with all these metrics? Because having all these numbers at one piece of paper or on one screen doesn't mean anything. So what should you do with this? Measure, okay, next, after measurement, you have these numbers, what are you doing with that? What? Actually, yeah, that, that is exactly, act on it. So, you need to log everything, then analyze everything, and then improve, uh, improve according to that. What does it basically mean? You have, let's say, the success rate of, of some of your features, and you see that some of your customers is far away from that average success rate, which means that you can proactively contact that customer and say, hey buddy, I see that you have an issue with this. Can we help? Can we jump in and help and see what is actually bothering you? Vladeta is doing uh, that. He's going through our logs every day, seeing that if some clone process failed, he contacts our customer and says, hey, we saw in our logs that you tried to clone your website, but it wasn't successful. Can we jump in and can we help? So in that way, you're not waiting for customer to contact you. You're contacting your customers instead. And you're increasing customer satisfaction and you're resolving customer issues and you're improving your product according to that. So when you find a bug, you fix it it doesn't reappear again. So, Rodbeck said that 90% of time, nimble storage is informing customers about issues rather than waiting for customers to inform them. So, they eliminated 50% of their column volume in terms of managed WP. It would mean that we decreased the number of tickets by 50% after implementing this predictive and perspective approach and they, the, the number continued to, to decrease while they had 30% more customers. So they had 30% more customers and almost the half of tickets which were, which were addressed comparing to the previous year by implementing proactive support. Now it's time for you to ask questions to me. Uh, well, I wanted to ask uh, uh, a trick question, considering that you mentioned all the metrics about managing WP. Uh, there is a clear advantage when you are dealing with a modern product in terms of, of the metrics you can use, but there is also a disadvantage that you talk to the customer less. So I uh, wanted to ask you how would you uh, provide proactive support if you actually talk to the customers Okay, can you repeat the, the second part of the question if it was serious at all, or I can just address the first one? How would you want to communicate with the customers in a proactive manner if uh, you were uh, to do it uh, face to face and uh, face the customers in that direction each day instead of just relying on statistics? Okay, I still think that you need to have some numbers and something that you will track. It doesn't matter which channel of communication it is. Uh, if it is uh, online channel, live channel, or face to face, uh, you still need to have some some business analytics that you need to to, to count on. Uh, so once when you have uh, key KPIs that you track for for your business, 
And once when you know which customers are not successfully using your product or your service or whatever it is, then uh, you can use another channel. It can be ticket, it can be live chat, it can be face to face, uh, but still it is important to have, uh, to have something that you can count on. So you know that the key question is what makes my customer successful? And if my customer, uh, if the part of the success of my uh, customer is my product or my service, it means that I need to know what, what is exactly my, my role in that. At the end of the day, the channel of communication might not see as, as, as the key for deep reactive support. Okay, uh, so, so far from, from our perspective, the, 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 biggest, uh, the biggest number of, of uh, communication, the biggest part of communication is done through, through tickets. So I'm not sure that uh, I can address that question in a well way. We tried uh, chat and it was a uh, quick and effect for uh, some, uh, some, some quick issues that you can, you can, you can uh, reply quickly, but if, uh, if something requires a uh, debug process, chat is not so efficient. So I think that it depends on the actual issue and the flow that you take from the customer. You take customer flow, and then upon a part of the customer flow, you decide which, which uh, channels will be addressed. So maybe for the sales part and the acquisition part, the best would be to have a chat if you have, of course, uh, of course, uh, uh, I lost even the, uh, the, the word in Serbian. If you, the, if you have the capacity, if you have the capacity to cover it, so it would be good to have a, to have a chat or live, uh, live phone support, but for some, some issues that are uh, requiring a bigger amount of time, it is, it is not, uh, not good to, to, to expect it to, to work on it in a, in a live chat. So tickets are better. actually achieved it because it wasn't really, really, since we achieved it very fast, it wasn't really planned well. Uh, we wanted uh, the average amount of tickets per customer was 90, 92 per 1,000. Yeah, and uh, the goal was to, do, to decrease it in the, in the following, until the end of the year to 70, which actually happened only with the, uh, with this Orion, managed WP Orion is, uh, is right before the official launch, so the average number of tickets per customer decreased uh, thanks to that. So basically, uh, yeah, we are trying to, to, to plan it, but we need to find a, a smarter way how to plan. Like, it was easier to, 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 easy to achieve it. I think it is important to have a goal that you will strive for and that your actions, like if you're, I'm leading a team and I need to know like, uh, if I have a goal, I can uh, adapt actions according to that. So basically I think that it is very important to, to have a goal, but uh, maybe it is better to have it in a shorter period of time. So that's what uh, Luca was talking about sprints and maybe like some, some kind of mix, like you have a goal, but you try to achieve it in a, in a, in a, in a sprint, not like to have a yearly goal, because in, in this industry, things change very fast. So. What was your biggest challenge? <laughs> the biggest challenge? Uh, <laughs> most, probably, most probably getting, getting your, your uh, trust, like that, that uh, like switching from from Davor to me and like having like some different approach definitely. So uh, getting your trust and getting used all of us, not not just you but me as well, 
to different different approach and different way of working. So. No more questions? Is the is the um that support the game system is it custom built in order to track all those tabs or it's purchased with extensions and stuff like that? Uh, in Manage WP Classic, everything is custom built, so, so it, it was built by, by our team. In uh, RAM, we are trying to use other, other services as well. So currently, we use Help Scout for ticketing system, but we are also integrating some part of our statistics. So about all these statistics that I mentioned, we are pulling it, some of them from other services, some of them from our internal logs, uh, but at the end of the day, all statistics are ours now. If no more questions, that will be it. Thank you very much. Thank you.